Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thanks for attending this talk. Uh, so today, uh, I'm going to tell you about our recent work, uh, joint work with Rakesh War at Penn on strategic formation and reliability of supply chain networks. And let me first uh, describe what I mean by uh, supply chain networks, in particular, uh, if you've never seen them. <laughs> Um, so think about the supply chain network as a multipartite graph. So in this case, uh, we just have three tiers. Uh, tier one, maybe auto dealers, they sell cars to consumers and auto dealers buy cars from car manufacturers and car manufacturers in turn buy automotive parts from top tier suppliers, which manufacture these parts and they make these parts out of raw materials. So uh, downstream tier one suppliers are usually referred to as retailers, but other than that, every agent in the system may be called supplier. So uh, every retailer has an exposure to consumer market. Uh, every top tier supplier has exposure to raw materials. Um, and uh, there are some links in this network. And um, uh, if uh, there is a link between supplier one and uh, upstream supplier two, it means uh, that supplier one can buy product from another supplier. Um, so that's just the structure of a supply chain, but uh, besides the structure, uh, there is some behavior embedded in the chain. So let's assume that um, there is a certain uh, potential, buying potential at the consumer side. So consumers may buy up to a certain amount of product. So let's, let's call it demand. And uh, for simplicity, let's assume that all retailers, downstream retailers have equal exposure to the consumer market. So this demand or potential demand is equally distributed among the retailers. So now uh, retailers distribute this demand based on uh, which mid-tier suppliers they source product from, for example, this, uh, second retailer sources all four units from the second upstream supplier and the first retailer can split its demand over the two upstream suppliers. And this way demand propagates through the supply chain upstream and reaches the raw material market. And this is where production can start. Some raw materials are produced. Then uh, we assume that there is a price formation in every pair of adjacent tiers. There is a market clearance assumption. And well, on the mechanical side, uh, the market price is just determined uh, by the output of the upstream market through the linear inverse demand curve. Uh, so uh, raw material producers deliver some output this output is sold to top tier suppliers at the market price. And at this point, some disruptions may happen. A natural disaster or a labor union strike, uh, it doesn't matter, but uh, in um, any um, situation, the output of a given supplier may be reduced. So think about a very simple Bernoulli yield model. Uh, either a supplier produces 100% of what is asked from it, or it produces nothing. So uh, this uh, top tier supplier in the middle produces nothing in this case. As a result, the output of the entire upstream market is reduced, which results in the growth of the market price at which upstream suppliers sell product downstream, simply because product becomes scarcer. Um, and uh, this way, uh, uh, product starts to propagate back to consumers and market price is formed in every tier. So every tier is function as a kind of an independent market. Uh, and uh, if a supplier has not enough product to fulfill orders of every buyer, then there is a simple rationing scheme based on uh, buyer demand. So eventually consumers get uh, some amount of product at the market price. So this is at the very high level how supply chain networks work. Uh, so the key takeaway from this uh, animation on the previous slide is that supply chains are exposed to these disruptions, which can be either production failures or delays or congestion. Um, and uh, welfare of supply chain members critically depends upon how the supply chain network is wired. And uh, in uh, centrally planned uh, supply chain literature, uh, typically supply chains hedge against various disruptions through multi-sourcing. 
essentially if I'm a buyer and uh, if I want to reliably buy some product upstream, then uh, I would uh, sign a bunch of contracts. I will have some backup suppliers. So if one supplier fails, I still have some uh, other suppliers to source product from. Um, so, uh, what are the options for the supply chain network from the central planning perspective? Well, one option is a complete network, complete capertite graph. So, obviously, very resilient, very redundant, but at the same time, very expensive. So, think about every link as a contract, and the contract uh, may take uh, six months to sign. So, it's quite expensive. And uh, there are other cheaper uh, network structures proposed in central plan, uh, centrally planned supply chain literature like L chains and uh, appropriately defined graph expanders, appropriately defined for the K partite network case. So these are sparser and cheaper, but still there is this central planning idea. But the main question that we ask in this paper is well, suppose there is no central planning. What if we allow agents to make their own sourcing decisions without any coordination involved? The question is will they create a resilient supply chain network. And the three key aspects that we focus in this paper are endogenous network formation, disruptions, and competition. So strict subsets of these aspects have been considered in supply chain literature, but all three have not before this paper. So um, we will consider actually two models in this paper to answer this central question. And uh, on the technical side, we will consider a certain single shot network formation game with costly links. So uh, in the simplest case, we'll have just two tiers, retailers and suppliers. So it's going to be a bipartite supply chain. I will also tell you about some results for arbitrary large supply chains. Uh, so in this case, with retailers and suppliers, retailers will be players. So every retailer will be deciding which sub subset of suppliers to source product from. So our strategies will be subsets of links between the retailers and suppliers. Uh, and agents will be engaging, retailers will be engaging in the single shot network formation game and will be asking the questions, well, are there any pure strategy and national equilibrium in this game? And if so, what are these networks? Are they resilient or not so resilient? So let me describe to you the first model that we used to answer this question about uh, resilient network formation. So I call it a supply chain network formation model without congestion. And in a second, I will tell you what I mean by without congestion. So we have two tiers, retailers and suppliers. Um, and in this case, like I said, retailers are players and uh, uh, the retailer PAVE has a very simple structure. It, it consists of three components. The first component is the loss due to buying a certain product quantity upstream at the upstream tiers market price. The second component is the gain from selling a certain quantity of product downstream, well, in this case, to consumers, at the market price formed in the retailer tier. And finally, uh, we have the linking cost loss. So essentially, every retailer pays per link created, it pays per contract. And now, what I mean by uh, the lack of congestion? So, uh, if many retailers decide to simultaneously source a huge amount of product from a single supplier, there will be no uh, dramatic ramifications <laughs> of this decision. So, uh, that's no congestion in the very sense of congestion games. Uh, or alternatively, you can think that uh, supplier capacities are very large in this case. So, regardless of how many retailers will decide to source from a given supplier, they will be able to get uh, that amount of product conditional upon production success. So every agent in the system, every retailer and every supplier can fail, say fail with a fixed probability. A fixed probability produces nothing and with a complementary probability it produces the full output. So retailers engage in the following game here. In the first phase, retailers make sourcing decisions before production realization. Production is not realized, failures are not realized, prices are not realized, and the retailers need to decide which suppliers to uh, contract with. So essentially, the network is created in advance. As soon as the bipartite network between the retailers and suppliers is created, then production failures are realized, after that market prices are realized under market clearance assumption, and then 
retailers buy product upstream at the market price and they sell product downstream conditional upon the retailers having something to sell well there is a potential for disruption at every retail as well uh, and we ask uh, the question are there any pure strategy in hash equilibria and if so what are they so it appears that uh, this network formation game has a, a unique up to agent labeling non-empty Nash equilibrium. And it looks as follows. Every retailer maintains just a single link and every retailer links to the same supplier upstream. So this result is extremely counterintuitive. Well, first of all, uh, it goes against the intuition that retailers should hedge against uh, uncertainty in upstream supplies by diversifying their supplier bases by creating multiple links but uh, it appears that in this environment when there is no congestion or alternatively when supplies are uncapped uh, there is no need for creation of multiple links because uh, regardless of uh, how many suppliers decide to source from a given su supplier if the supplier succeeds uh, producing output it will deliver as much product as requested from it but uh, a more interesting behavior is this link concentration so why it happens it's easy to understand uh, why it happens by looking at two qualitatively different scenarios so in the first scenario on the left all the retailers source from the same supplier and on the right retailers source from different suppliers so in this case on the left there are two situations. Uh, first, what if this single link supplier fails? Well, then there is no trade. No retailer gets any product, no retailer sells any product downstream, retailers pay per a single link, some nominal price. So uh, there is no huge loss incurred by anyone in the system. But if the single supplier succeeds producing output, essentially delivers output uh, to every retailer. It delivers exactly what every retailer asked for. As a result, the supplier market is saturated with product. So the quantity of product in the upstream market is large. And uh, this results in the low, very low market price in the upstream market. So in this case, retailers buy at a very low market price. So uh, in this situation, well, there is only one seller, so we could have thought about it as a monopoly situation, but we don't explicitly handle this monopoly case. So think about suppliers as a meta suppliers, or if you wanted to incorporate the monopoly case here, uh, then you would, would have ended up with a similar equilibrium, but maybe there would have been two suppliers with links, but qualitatively, <laughs> you would still see the same network with link concentration. Uh, on the other hand, when um, retailers source from different suppliers, then essentially they buy at a worse upstream market price because a certain fraction of uh, suppliers uh, fail with some probability. Um, and um, the likelihood of uh, encountering this situation when the upstream market is saturated with product and the market price is very low is lower. Uh, and this situation immediately generalizes to the case of arbitrary number of tiers. So if we have many tiers, then the resulting equilibrium supply chain is almost like a chain. So that's counterintuitive. Now let us uh, do something about it. So let us extend the previous model and add one more cost to the model. So in addition to the linking cost, we extend the retailer payoff with one extra term, which is the congestion cost. Uh, and the congestion cost is essentially as it sounds. Uh, it's, uh, well, think about uh, like a quadratic function of the amount of product produced by a given supplier. So when lots of retailers decide to source lots of products from a given supplier, they experience uh, high congestion penalties. Um, so, and uh, this is the only change to the model. So the rest uh, is the same. So retailers engage in the same network formation game and we still ask the same question. Are there any pure strategy Nash equilibrium networks in this game? And are they, what are they? Are they resilient? So it appears that 
in this model with congestion, it's much harder to characterize the whole set of equilibria, but we can focus on the symmetric equilibrium. And it appears that the symmetric equilibria are expander-like. So, uh, well, graph expanders are those uh, sparse yet uh, sufficiently redundant networks, which have been shown not long ago to be very resilient supply chains from the central planning perspective. But here we see that these expander-like networks arise endogenously without any central planning involved. Um, and here I call them expander-like uh, because, well, they're not proper expanders and that expanders are defined with respect to a bottleneck in the network. So you're looking for the minimal expansion. So here, these networks may have a few bottlenecks, but if you ignore this few bottlenecks, then the rest of the network is an expander. Or if you look at the difference between this equilibrium and the proper expander, then this difference will be small in the sense of some appropriately defined uh, graph distance. Um, so, uh, and, um, well, this equilibria arise um, as a result uh, of a combination of two forces. One force is the lean concentration. Uh, it comes from the previous model. Retailers like to concentrate links, uh, thereby securing better upstream prices. Uh, but at the same time, we have a competing force here, which is uh, uh, the congestion force. It drives retailers towards spreading out their supplier bases to avoid high congestion costs. So uh, I will very briefly mention one more result. So now we know about equilibria. What about incentives for suppliers to improve reliability? Should suppliers want to, in uh, to improve their reliability? Well, there are two ways to improve it. First, they can reduce congestion penalties. Well, maybe they can increase their capacities or they can uh, reduce wait times and producing uh, product faster. So it's always good. That's always good unconditionally. And another way to improve reliability is increasing mean yield. And this is beneficial to a supplier only to some extent. After some point, uh, increasing mean yield can actually hurt a supplier, which is, of course, uh, not so good in uh, the eyes of the retailers. The retailers would like as high mean yield as possible. So uh, let me just summarize. So the core novelty in this work is a model of endogenous formation of a supply chain network that captures disruptions and competition. And one big insight is that resilient supply chain network, which have been shown to be resilient from the central planning perspective, arise here naturally in an endogenous fashion without any coordination among the agents. And one, I'll just mention one interesting open problem. So in this um, model, we made one simplifying assumption. We assume that agents only strategize with links. So they decide whom to link to, but they don't strategize in order quantities. What if we allow both? So in the case uh, without congestion, nothing would change. We would still see this conic shaped networks where retailers would con concentrate links, but when congestion is added, that's an interesting open problem. So let me stop here. And uh, if I have any time left, I'm happy to answer questions. <laughs>